Hello there, Internet, and you amazing and beautiful creatures of the beyond. I am back, I'm feeling great, and I am capable to keep my mind in one place. <laughs> I hope you're all doing amazing, and let's see what we're going to discuss today. Um, so, art distortion. What the hell is art distortion? Well, I was looking online like any other creature that uh, roams the internet and we've all seen those uh, interesting memes with the um, Photoshop editing uh, AI thing, which is called generative feel. Basically, you can take any picture you want and then in Photoshop you drag an area around it and it generates, well, it looks for colors and images that kind of fit in with uh, the environment and it generates something out of the blue. You don't know exactly what's going to generate. Uh, I think there are some parameters you can think. But anyway, the idea is that uh, you've seen those uh, poses with uh, the mature film um, actresses, which they take just a cropped image of their faces and then they get an interesting image, which is out of place, out of context, but still, it's wow, in my opinion. It is a very powerful tool. And that made me think, what exactly is the purpose of art or media in general, be it uh, photographs, video, and so on? Because for the general public in the past, it meant to take a snapshot of history or of the past that we lived in and to present it to the future or remember it from the past. But to be honest, I'm kind of not really sure this is the same principle today because if you go like on Instagram or Facebook or whatever place you want and just look at pictures, you kind of see that it's the images of the present that people idolize and try to present themselves to the world and create a sort of a marketing towards them, like, look, this is me, this is how I look. But with these new tools that give us such amazing abilities to edit, it's not even editing at this point, it's distorting. Uh, because in the past, we had like Snapchat filters and so on. And we can kind of enhance our faces because as humans, we are creatures of habit. And we are very preoccupied with how we look, how we uh, are being perceived by the outside people and so on. So we always try to put on our best look to give that best impression. But in the last last decades, I think this has been pushed a lot towards like we are starting to morph ourselves into something that we are really not. And um, you've seen a lot of these uh, profiles where the girls look just amazing and when in reality you look at them, they look just plain like anyone else. They're not fabulous, they're not photo models, but filters give us this ability to push our looks beyond what uh, is natural for us. And in a way, this would be, it's not really a critique because we cannot oppose technology. It's unwise to oppose technology. The technology is here. In my opinion, we are not really prepared for this step. It was too, too soon for us to, to jump into it. But I still think we can adapt and use it in constructive ways instead of destructive or um, manipulative ways, hopefully. But if you really think about it, we've always tried to change the past, to kind of uh, put things in a more of a happy vibe kind of criteria. So, for example, you know, like in history, history is written by those who are left, not by those who are right, pun intended. Uh, that 
that's what happened with art. Like all of those victory portraits and so on, they depict like glorious victories and so on. But in reality, those victories maybe were very bloody, uh, with a lot of casualties. Uh, perhaps it was based on luck. Uh, perhaps it was uh, a surrender or something like that. But it, when we start to apply media to it, in this case, art of a photography or painting, we we are the ones that we decide what the message is transmitted through what we present or what we create. So we can manipulate art in many ways if we really want it to. And we can skew the message in such a way that it fits our agenda. And in the past, it wasn't so easy to implement mainly. Like, imagine taking the Mona Lisa and changing it to another person, not who the Mona Lisa was, and repeating that over and over and over and making it maybe even more beautiful than the Mona Lisa. And then people see this new version and they see it for quite some time. And then they go to the museum to see the original and they're like disappointed because the Mona Lisa doesn't look so enhanced, so photomodelish as in the new version that's presented online. And we get, I don't know, we get sour and sad. It's like, ah, like this is not what we really wanted to see. We want to see flashy things. We want to see things that we consider beauty in this moment. And interestingly enough, beauty is really in the eye of the beholder because in the past, uh, women who were more voluminous were being considered uh, attractive because that would mean they would be healthier, they would come from a wealthier family, and if you are skinnier, you would be seen as poor or sickly. And that thing has switched recently. So, indeed, we can we can skew the message exactly how we wish, depending on the work we are doing. But the question is, now that we have these tools at our disposal, how will we use them? Because I don't know how the future will look like and what the future will bring. And I mean from a sociological point of view and a psychological one as well. Because we are changing as a species and we are becoming more impulsive, more attracted to things that are flashy instead of things that uh, put our intellect to work. And if we distort the past too much, the future generations will look with, I don't know, sadness, because we erase something that is true about us. We erase our footprint in history, and we push ourselves to become these generic, models that you won't be able to distinguish be between them, you know, like everybody will try to have that amazing chin, that amazing skin, and AI tends to just kind of create copy-pastes and in, in quotes of course, but you get a template, you know, and you're erasing something that you really are in favor of something that is just a bit more pleasant just because you think you're not being accepted acceptable enough. So I think we should educate ourselves with these tools on how to use them correctly and how not to push them in a way that it mutates us and deforms us to, to become morbid creatures of the future. <laughs> If that makes any sense, I don't know. I really, I really think we are capable as a species, but it's also depending on the trend that goes online. And let's make no mistake, because the online environment is the reality that a large portion of the human species is taking as the default thing right now. Um, I mean the, the younger generations, 
including our generations between, let's say, 30 to 40 years, we're still pretty much embedded in the internet right now. Um, yeah, I don't know. The future is weird. <laughs> hopefully it will be in a good way. And hopefully we can... We can create art in more creative ways. And I try not to put a negative spin into it because I do see a lot of negativity going around these subjects. But I always try to look for the good things that we can get out of them. And it does not need the entire population to focus on these good things. It just needs a persistent and not necessarily loud, but, well, recognizable group of people that really enjoy what they do to show others and to inspire others how to improve their art and their lives in a way by being original instead of creating fakes or just dreams that really do not represent us. Well, maybe that is the whole point that I'm trying to reach. Well, you guys are awesome. And have a wonderful day. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye, 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 bye.